here's Elijah, who had been fearless for years, and at the threat of one person, he wants to take his life. He becomes frightened. He turns and runs out to the edge of the desert and gets depressed. And I think it's a picture of where we find ourselves sometimes. And one of the things I like about the Bible is really how real it is. It doesn't always show these biblical characters as perfect. In fact, most of the Bible is full with imperfect characters. It doesn't show Elijah as this great person who never does anything wrong. Watch this. He was a human and he struggled just like you and I do. So what should we make of Jacob? What can we say about him? He was a liar, a cheat, a thief, and deceiver. He took advantage of the people who loved him. He ran from the person who hated him. He thought he knew better than everyone else, including God. He was a crooked tree in the family line. But there's one more thing we can say about Jacob. He was beloved of God. He was precious in his sight. It can be difficult, but I think that Naomi's pain, even though God didn't create it, He allowed it. Because this trauma was the catalyst that sent her back home. Sometimes, God will allow pain in your life to push you out of a place you shouldn't have been to begin with. Sometimes He will allow hard things to come because they're the catalyst that make us do the thing He's been asking us to do. The job He wants you to quit, when you wait too long, you find yourself fired or laid off. The thing He wants you to leave, you wait too long, He will push you out. So even in the hard times, God is moving us home. He wants to bring us back to the place where He is. Here's where we know why Ruth's decision to stay with Naomi was based on something that had to do with the call of God on her life. Because she actually says in verse 16, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from following you because where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. I'm sure Ruth was a nice girl, but what she was really after was the God who she'd come to know from living with Elimelech and Naomi and their sons. See, David was imperfect. He was messed up. Honestly, if he lived today, he'd probably be in, in prison. The dude was a wreck, but he was abandoned and single-minded and completely in love with an invisible God. And he lived absolutely surrendered. And as you read the Psalms, you're gonna see a man who actually was satisfied with God alone. 